Over the course of my time as a critic on YouTube and just as a movie lover in general, yes, I did exist outside of this channel at one point, I have often said, man, I love a good 90 minute movie. I have recently been repeating this a lot because I've noticed newer films are starting to scale back and get closer to that coveted 90 minute mark, that hour and a half that I just say is mm, chef's kiss. Some people have foolishly decided that I'm saying that as some sort of slight against movies that are longer, but that's, that's not fair and that's not true. In fact, I had a buddy, I kid you not, call me up two days ago and say, this is how the conversation started. Hey, uh, wh why don't you, what's your deal with 90 minute movies? Why do you like them so much? <laughs> and if you're listening, you know the conversation, you know what you said. And I laughed at first, but I was also taken aback, like Jesus, shot out of a cannon much. What did I do? Who hurt you? But I understand that maybe I was coming off that way, like uh, this, is the, this is what you need to go for. Anything longer is just too much. But I want to tell you right now, that's not what I believe, but I want to tell you why also within my heart of hearts, where do humans have their hearts at up here? That 90 minutes can take a crap movie and bring it to something at least somewhat watchable. Let's talk about it. Before I dive into what surely will be a very groundbreaking, earth-shattering commentary about the length of film, if you wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe and the notification bell. Notification bell is just as important because then these videos actually show up in your feed. Otherwise, you're subscribed to the channel, but you're not really. YouTube's still not gonna show you my stuff all the time. And that that's troubling, that's disheartening. But let's get into it, and I really appreciate it if you did subscribe. For movie fans out there, such as myself, connoisseurs, people that go out and watch a new movie every single week, sometimes multiple films. I, I, I myself watch probably, at this point, four, maybe five new movies every seven days. So that's almost one a day I'm doing. And I am 100% drawn to movies that are around 90 minutes, an hour 45, two hours is a top for me. That, that's like the threshold. Which is funny because most of the movies I love and put above everything else are longer than two hours. The Matrix, Jurassic Park, Fight Club, I'm pretty sure these movies are all over two hours. If they're not, then I stand corrected. But Lord of the Rings, my favorite trilogy of all time, well over three hours. Hell, you can toss the Hobbit films in there. I love those movies as well. All three of them, I will die on this hill. And yes, they're padded out to shit and back based off a very small single book. I don't care, I love Middle Earth. I'll spend time with Peter Jackson's version of it. Almost every single Christopher Nolan movie is held in very high regard and they should be. They're very good movies all over two hours. But I said I watch a lot of movies in a year. And if you're watching this channel, you probably do as well. And so you know as well as I do that most films that come out in a calendar year are not great. They're probably not terrible. They're somewhere in the middle. But a middle of the road, mediocre movie can actually be very entertaining if it understands what it is. And it understands in order to entertain properly, it needs to get in and get the fuck out. A great movie can take as much time as it wants and people will be very happy for it. But a bad movie, you better make sure you are out the door fast because then I will have less time to seethe about how much of my precious hours have been burned by you. I always use this movie as the go-to example for what I mean. Jet Li's The One. The movie is under an hour and a half. It came out not too long after The Matrix. The trailers presented it as some sort of spiritual successor to The Matrix, like, if you like that film, check out this cutting edge technology full of awesome action, high octane thrills, a killer soundtrack, and some of the best fighting you've ever seen. None of that was true. I do stand corrected, the music was awesome in that movie, but everything else was pretty corny. Hilariously campy special effects, the action, while fun, did have a lot of that slow motion cheese mixed in. And while the premise was actually very cool, there was clearly not enough budget or enough thought put into how to make this movie grand and great in scale. And so instead, they took the approach, rightfully so, 
to get in and get out, present the story, have a whole bunch of wild action scenes, don't slow down too much, have a big finale, and finish strong. That's what I like to do as well. When I talk about movies, get your head out of the gutter. If Jet Li's The One was a two hour film, I would have a hard time getting through it because that's when the cracks really start to show. The longer a movie's gonna be, the less resources and time you have allocated to the other stuff happening in the movie. And it was already stretched pretty thin. And while I do think Jet Li's The One, very stupid movie, I have a freaking blast watching it. I can sit down in front of the TV with a meal, pop open a Coke, and before that bad boy's gone, we're at the end credits. It's beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. Let's compare Jet Li's The One to something more modern. Kevin Costner's film, Horizon, an American saga. Chapter one. There's two of these movies, and he put chapter one in the title, which automatically turns off a lot of audience members. That's why most films now coming out from Hollywood hide the fact that it's a part one. I've talked to several people that are excited about Wicked, and I said, yeah, um, it's, a, it's a two hour, 45 minute film, and it's only half of the story. And then they're like, what, what, what are you talking about? I said, well, it's part one, this is a two part film. People went to Across the Spider-Verse, not knowing that it was setting up a third film. They didn't know they thought it was gonna be a completed story, completed picture, but nope, that, that's just half of it. And now you gotta wait for two more years for the next one. Fast and the Furious 10 ends on a cliffhanger. It's not a completed story. It basically is a part one of a two-part saga housed inside of an 11 movie run. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning was a part one. They foolishly put it on the title. And that's one of the reasons they believe the movie didn't do as well as it should have. I think there's a myriad of reasons. The time the movie came out, the, the constraints because of COVID. But you'll notice that the title for this next film is called Mission Impossible Final Reckoning. There's no part two. There's nothing at all referencing the fact that this is a sequel to the one that came before. As far as I could tell. Horizon, an American saga part one, which is already a mouthful of a title, is three hours long. And the sequel, I believe, is said to be two hours and 45 minutes. So three hours for a Western movie, which are typically very slowly paced just by design of a Western, that is only half of a film, is not a very enticing thing for people to sit through. And it very much bombed because of it. And I did not watch the movie because of that runtime. You gotta understand, movie theaters also have 20 to 30 minutes of trailers now. I don't wanna waste legitimately half of my day almost driving to a theater and sitting there for three and a half, four hours and heading back home. That's a five hour excursion. I could put on Jet Li's The One and watch it on repeat like two and a half, three times by the time that whole process is over with. So there is value to a shorter story and a shorter movie. A ton of amazing movies are very long, two hours plus, three hours plus, but there's a lot of bad or generic movies that are actually more rewatchable. And I'm someone that actually really likes rewatching films that have some quotable lines, some, some good action. And so I will automatically be drawn to movies that can get that across quicker. And no, it's not because everyone has ADD or an attention span problem. We all saw Oppenheimer, that movie's long as shit. Everybody really enjoyed it. We all saw Killers of the Flower Moon. It was long as fuck. I enjoyed that one too. But I also don't really have any desire to ever watch them again. Now, if they were shorter, yeah, I, I probably would. I'd probably rewatch them. And the same goes for modern action movies. The John Wick movies are getting so long, so ridiculous. It's like, how many times do I need to see you fall down the stairs? One time I got the point across, all right? You're going through some hardships to get to the final boss. We get it. You can do this through a montage of falling. I don't need to see it all play out in real time. Same with The Last Mission Impossible. These are becoming kind of a grueling chore to get through. Keep them simple, execute them quicker. And I think it's time to execute this conversation. Thank you for watching or listening or whatever you're doing right now. Please like the video and subscribe. I post tons of movie reviews, commentary. I'm getting back into live streams every Tuesday. Check those out for sure. And hopefully I catch you next time. If you've been watching me for a while and you wanna think about giving back, please think about joining Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. 
Every month there are brand new exclusives over there. The library has over 300 exclusive videos already. It's a great way to support me and my one man operation and you get exclusive perks for doing so. All right, hopefully I see you next time. Take care.